I think it's like an a priori. Um, the question, you know, a better question would be, why aren't you involved in the workers? I've been around and the people we work with have been around, uh, you know, ideas over the decades, which point us in the direction of seeing that the way, you know, society will be trans can be transformed and improved is through, you know, working people, their workplace, or also in their communities. I think the the whole concentration on workers struggles. I, I think we'd felt that all the video activism that came out of the anti-capitalist movement was great at filming like community struggles and filming sort of big showpiece demonstrations, but no one seemed to be concentrating on workers struggles at all. And I suppose from my point of view and a number of other people around Real News, we, we're all sort of from militant trade union backgrounds. And so we thought, well, we're probably the people to do it. Plus, it just feels like the most important thing, because that's where the power is, really. I mean, I was involved in um, worker struggles even prior to this collective forming, um, working on videos by myself or with other people. Um, because, as in many places, it's it's a very uh, it's it's an issue that doesn't isn't given a lot of attention um, by anybody. Really, it's not just about uh, news or about the media. But um, in Egypt, it is the case that worker struggles are really looked down upon. And um, I mean, what plays a large part in this is that a lot of the the private media is owned by. Uh, capitalists who aren't interested in uh, portraying uh, worker struggles or the reasons for worker struggles and then you have of course the the government media outlets who um, don't want to portray any sort of social uh, you know issues, any sort of social struggles of any form when the um, crisis got to happen in Greece we start a new assembly with another, with all the workers that was interested in this part, called Sibatec, and that part of the assembly <coughs> only focus was the, how can I, the, the labor problems, something like that. So in that point, we found ourselves as a group, the Acoptes, that we needed to find a new perspective as a group. We didn't want to break the group. So we thought maybe we can use our means of work, my cameras and so on, to support the, the big strikes that happened at the moment in Greece, the first big strikes happening at the moment in Greece. I mean, we're very sort of clear about the fact that we're trying to express the, the voice of the rank and file of the union. Um, so the problems we get sometimes is like when the rank and file come into conflict with their own leadership um, because the leadership either wants to sort of sell a strike out or they're not giving the support that they want or whatever and in those situations we're always going to take the side of the ordinary worker so we you know a lot of the trade union leaderships are a bit mistrustful of us and they're quite right to be because we will go at them if they don't if they don't back their workers up, and I think you always have to push these people to to do their job, really. So, uh, so never any problem with ordinary workers. Often, quite a lot of problems with the leadership trade unions, though. The common problem that the, the reappearing is uh, you have to talk to the union, the heads of the union. Let's say. Uh, not only because you know the union is capitalising the struggle, but. Uh, uh, because also the workers also are, uh, you know, uh, they they tend to leave the communication to their leaders. Let's say the leaders of the union. I mean, there's always all sorts of difficulties in in filming worker struggles. Um, entering workspaces only happens, usually in my experience, when they're occupied by the workers, and when they are, um, you have access to everything, and it's quite. In, I mean, the contrast is quite incredible because if they're not in control of their workspaces, even filming a protest at the gate might be difficult and um, you could easily be, um, you know, questioned by the security or by the police or even um, citizens in, in the neighborhood. You know, if you're, once you're in the protection of the workers, you can do what, what you like. 
but I'm, I'm actually a lot of this I'm speaking in the past tense because these days it's it's much much more difficult than it used to be due to the kind of security crackdown that we've seen in Egypt so these days someone you know being caught with a video camera at a checkpoint is already enough reason for you to be interrogated by the police in some cases you know arrested um, so it's, a, it's it's a very difficult period and I think actually all the more reason for workers to film things themselves because they have a they have a, a right to um, they are there and when someone like myself shows up with a camera it, it it's intrusive in, in more ways than one uh, the difficulty some of them are are getting funding early on we decided to avoid going to uh, try to get grants from funders you know um, we looked at th early on we looked at them and uh, we realized that they they were not really interested in, in class struggle. So we, we go and we get our funding from, you know, rank and file people from uh, labor organizations, especially, you know, not necessarily the internationals, but, uh, you know, locals, union locals. We put out a DVD, um, we put out a DVD every couple of months, which is sort of a 90 to 100 minute DVD with about seven to nine short films on it. Um, that goes out to all the people who subscribe to us, um, you know, partly so they get something back for giving us a bit of money to get a steady income flow stream, but mainly so that people can take them and use them to do public screenings themselves or, or show them in trade union meetings. But on top of that, we put everything online. Um, we use Facebook, we use Twitter, we've got our own website as well. So we, we try and use as much stuff as possible, really. Um, but I think for us, it, it's I think it's all about using new digital technology, um, whether that's like online tools or whether it's the you know cameras or whatever, but using all that stuff to do something quite old fashioned really, which is just trying to get everybody into a room together to discuss stuff. And for us, the public screenings are by far the most important thing. Uh, we have a, a blog that is, uh, we're trying to keep uh, updated with uh, uh, the events that we are organizing and the uh, videos we are producing. And uh, we are sharing our videos uh, right after they are finished. Uh, we put them online in uh, YouTube after a long discussion about what is the best way to distribute our videos. We decided for YouTube as a more populist uh, means. A populist media is something that uh, everybody could have access to it. For every video we produce, we organize an event to present it, a public event uh, where we may announce it by emails and uh, maybe even posters that uh, we go to a, to a theater maybe or to a squatted place and we project the film and, and uh, usually we are trying to invite the people involved in the video like the, the workers that uh, the struggles of which uh, we are showing. Uh, we are trying to organize a little discussion about uh, the struggle that our video is referred to. And uh, we are trying to, to, to make it happening around uh, the subject of our video. To spread our videos, you know, we rely primarily on the internet because that's um, easiest, but what was much more important to us during a period when it was possible was having screenings in the streets um, and this would create a much broader kind of um, uh, a much broader type of audience because then passers-by would stop and watch and comment and you could have workers there who participated in the struggles that were being screened and it was a very much more open form of discussion and conversation but setting these screenings up in a lot of times can be uh, almost as difficult as making the videos themselves.
there was very much the intention to try and um, influence those who considered themselves to part be participating in the revolution to to see to identify with worker struggles that were happening you know not necessarily in their own circles I think the main aim for us in doing all this is we're trying to use video as a political weapon basically we, we make no bones about the fact that we're completely biased in favor of like the campaigns that we're trying to publicize and the whole point of it for us is to create another tool for you know the campaign or the the group of workers that we're working with which will help them in winning their campaign basically it's it's the, it's very very political in those terms you know we're activists with video cameras so we're, we're as much a part of the campaign in a lot of cases as as you know a lot of the other people within it and we have we have a specific role in that in, in, in terms of documenting the struggle I think it's easier to do films about workers' struggles now because I think workers are more used to films being made about struggles. I think 30 years ago it was still quite an unusual thing. And also I think 30 years ago it was more unlikely for people like us, to be honest, to do it. You know, there weren't... Not, I don't think many working class people made films 30 years ago, or it was a lot more difficult for working class people to make films. Now we've all made, we've got the tools of production now, and they're relatively easy to get. Which means that I think for us it's it's very easy because when we go into places, like people know that we're you know people know what our background is, so they know that. You know, for, they know, for example, that I've led walkouts before and, and stuff like that. So you're sort of talking on an equal basis, and they know that they know what our motives are, and they know what our reasons for doing it are. But I also, think more importantly, there's more certainly in Britain, there's more and more groups of workers who are understanding how powerful video can be in a campaign, and are understanding how they can use it. So, for example, the electricians that we work with, what we were doing with them was basically every week they would tell us what actions they had going on you know legal and illegal and as soon as we filmed them we would put it up on the net the next day they would then take the link and send it out to every building worker in the country not just in britain but they'd also send it to australia to america um which started solidarity demonstrations and that they in a way they were the first group of workers we worked with who understood how powerful it was and how they could use it you know and i think what's come out of that is that more and more people have seen that and thought oh, God, this is actually, this could help us win the dispute if we use this thing. So I think now it's a lot easier because I think a lot more workers are a lot more savvy about this stuff, basically, and can see how it can be used. Up until recently, the technology usually is on, is on our side, you know, and one of the reasons that we come and film and make a film and then often go back to that space and screen it or invite them to a screening is because they don't have access to the tools, um, which is changing. I mean, in the workshops that Mussolini has done, um, and this I think actually goes back to the previous question, um, we have also trained workers to film because we find it um, very important to be able to give other people tools to, to cover their own protests. And I mean, this is something that I've been working on since 2011 as well, not always with a lot of success because it, it, it's quite, you find a lot of obstacles in trying to bring people like this together in a certain space, having access to a minimum of kind of um, editing software or um, filming equipment. I mean, recently, what has actually really helped is that people have phones with which they can film. And so we always do our workshops with the equipment that people have. So if they're coming with a camera or they're coming with a phone, we do the training on whatever they're using. And um, I mean, this is something that we've done in Cairo and outside of Cairo, and we try as much as possible in the workshops that we have to um, involve both, you know, people from a working class background and people who would consider themselves activists um, to try and bring people together again, and also really get workers to, to film their own struggles because they are the ones that know them best and have constant access to what is happening.